Hello and welcome to Cartoonist Kayfabe. My name is Jim Rugg. I'm Ed Piskor. And I'm Tom Scholey. Going to do Yummy Fur, cover to cover. But before we dive into this classic, Ed, how about Red Room? A modern day classic. Red Room Comics. Uh, Murder on the Dark Web for Fun and Profit is the name of the game. There are four issues on the stands as we speak, including the free comic book day comic. Uh, every issue completely self-contained. The free comic book day comic uh, is on my uh, Patreon, patreon.com slash edpiscor. That's free to the public? Free to the public, but the archive of more than 100 pages uh, can be accessed for the mere price of $3. Uh, put new strips up every Tuesday. Uh, links to the physical comics, links to the Patreon are available in my link tree in the description below this video. And shouts to everybody who gave a glance to uh, the Free Comic Book Day comic recently. Tom, where can people find more of your comics? Here's uh, Kirby Fur. Jack Kirby, The Epic Life of the King of Comics uh, from uh, Ten Speed Press, a subsidiary of Penguin Random House. Uh, we got the whole story of Jack Kirby's life. Uh, from start to finish, and, and all the different comics he worked on, all the different things he, he experienced, all the things he saw in his storied uh, career and life. Here's uh, Fantastic Four Grand Design, uh, my uh, reinterpretation of, of Jack Kirby's classic body of work. I, I uh, retell the, the entire story of, of the Fantastic Four and even give the story an ending, uh, and that's from Marvel Comics. And you can check out my YouTube channel, Total Recall Show, and uh, my Patreon, go to patreon.com, search Tom Scholey, and uh, my archive is also $3. You can join me on patreon.com slash jimrug, where you can download prints uh, or out-of-print zines and mini-comics, like this script from the Street Angel Gang, where you see a copy of my script, a copy of my first layouts that I do. There's a lot of process stuff, a lot of original art, and about a dozen of these out-of-print publications that you can download to see my art and to see how I make the comics that I make on patreon.com slash jimrug. So, Chester Brown's Yummy Fur uh, starts out being published by Vortex Comics, ends up at Drawn in Quarterly, and this is one of those alternative comics, one of the first ones I found, and really just changed the way I think of comics, and I love his covers, so I felt like this was a perfect series to do the cover treatment. This was the first issue I got at the flea market, but how bizarre, right? It looks scary. Yeah, it does, yes. Uh, rightfully so. I feel like these <laughs> comics are a little bit scary. First couple issues collect like his mini comics. So, you know, the art is going to evolve as we go through this, but I think it also is a reflection of Chester Brown. Like you see him experimenting and these covers show off that experimentation quite a bit. When people would talk about like independent comics back then, they'd be like, blah, 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 yummy fur, blah, blah, blah. And like that name stuck out. It's like, oh, that one sounds interesting. I love whenever he does this stuff that's sort of like genre. Yeah. Like, you know, like here having a werewolf coming around the corner, a little bit horror-like. The man who couldn't stop the uh, the <laughs> iconic story of the guy who can't stop crapping. Uh, pretty fun. How about that for a back cover? Brendan McCarthy's McCarthy, Paradox. Yeah. Pretty iconic. I think this is the collection cover of one of the Ed the Happy Clown collections, and which is serialized in these first several issues. Slowly bringing in the noodles and hatching. Yeah, definitely. You can see the drawing style evolving just even in these first four or five issues. His little autobiographical version of himself. Yeah, his, his uh, friend's pet name for him, right? Bunny, I think. And I, I, I feel like that's ended up in vinyl. Like, like you know, if you're at his table at a convention, <laughs> you could probably buy that. Love the, the adults only warning. Like any of these, uh, any of these yummy furs, that probably suits it pretty well. That's a pretty wild drawing compared to what we've seen so far on these covers. Extremely beautiful color palette, too. Very com All the colors complement one another. And you talk about, like, scary or whatever. The word balloon here is, Mom, I think she's hurt bad. <laughs> and they're looking off, off, uh, off cover. This is back to that genre stuff, Love like it. an old Marvel monster cover kind of thing. Invasion of the Micro Men. Very cool production techniques there. Yeah, Adventure in Science, the comic within a comic. Different size, you know, like the little figure on top of a, of a human or on top of a giant. Love the different size stuff. These are images that read very quickly. Mm -hmm. they do. You know, if you saw these, uh, one, they stand out, but also they would read small if you were looking at this on a screen and it was like the postage size stamp. You got to read the comic to know what that <laughs> is right there, man. And that's extremely Ed, funny. you might really be onto something with the horror element of these. Like, look at this guy. Yeah. <laughs> these are unpleasant images. Pretty fun with the sound effects, too. A little yeah. bit of a callback to that Adventures in Science where the logo's over top of other lettering. 
other stuff I can't talk about. <laughs> he, um, you'll, you'll notice as we get into these, like he's sort of communicating with the potential audience on some of these covers, you know, like that stuff I can't talk about, you know, in this book. There, you'll see a few of those call outs. Dealt with censorship. You know, this is, this is a Canadian creator and a Canadian company. And, uh, you know, they, they have certain rules up there that, uh, it, it just feels like they're more, uh, censorious in, in a way, uh, going to TCAF, uh, Toronto Comic Arts Festival, I remember librarians going up to, uh, Jess Fink and, and, like, being so happy that, uh, your book isn't on our band list anymore, and I'm like, <laughs> we're not in Kansas any longer. Yeah, it's something not to take for granted. You mentioned his coloring, Ed. I feel like uh, most of these covers are pretty noteworthy for his coloring to really stand out. Absolutely. It's a, like, it's a big part. Considering they're black and white comics, too, it's a big part of what makes these covers so effective. And, and uh, you know, when we when you, when you talk about, you know, use of browns and stuff, like, look at these pinks and blues, like, amazing colors. Oh, James Kachalka uh, uh, ghosted a, a cover. How about that, right? <laughs> Does Kachalka exist if this if this comic doesn't come out? <laughs> Take a look at what we're, we're looking at here, man. This is, uh, this is cut color separation. This is not ink lines uh, there. Like, the, these are cut color seps that could be a nightmare when it comes mm -hmm. to registration. Yeah, this is the, uh, do you think this is the stuff that, like, the early eight balls? Because if you look at the green, it really looks like those films. Yeah, know, yeah. My, I, I, I do think it is. Yeah, it's neat. I love the cartoon stuff, too. Because, uh, again, as we go through more of these, you're going to see him get kind of further and further out in terms of what he's putting on the covers, where he's thinking. And I think this is one of those early covers where it's like, okay, this is different. Plus, I like the cartoon iconography coming into play. And this is nearing the end now of the, uh, I think there's two more issues maybe or so before he wraps up the uh, Ed the Happy Clown series. One of the things he likes to do is have that like analogous color motif where there's like one opposite color to, to sort of like draw the eye. How funny is this? First issue. Haha, <laughs> just kidding. Actually, <laughs> yeah. it's the 15th issue. It's around that time. <laughs> like the blue there. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so you know, this is the cool uh, colors, man. So we're the next one, do warm colors and opposite treatment. Have that yeah, and, and of course, your spotty color on this one being the pink that pops the logo. Exactly. And they go traditional in a way. We've seen now uh, Wolfman, a Dracula, and Frankenstein mm -hmm. grace the cover of these. So, so fun. And look how bright that cover is. Yeah, definitely. Any Pen minute now, we'll, swinging. See a, we'll see a mummy. <laughs> nominated for four harvey awards put that shit front and center and calling out the exact stuff he lost <laughs> to. <laughs> and just slowly getting more dejected <laughs> that's fun very self-aware i guess this is actually the last issue of, of uh, ed the happy clown and another iconic cover in that this one was used for a cover yeah. of one of the collections. Yeah. I always love the hand holding the brush, too. I always thought that was, like, amazing. Really well drawn. Uh, it's so evocative. Uh, like, I mean, this looks like torture. Yeah. It's, Poly a, it's Pagliacci. It's a pretty, pretty great cover for that. Now he's starting to shift into some of, like, the autobio stuff. And we have a video where we look at Yummy Furs 19 and 20, uh, but a very different you know, look at the sensibility in terms of some of the cartoony covers that we've seen, and now we're seeing this auto bio hand is back, but applied completely differently than than the clown face painting, where, like, it's a whole different tone. You know, as an artist, you're looking at a hand holding a pencil or a brush all day long. If you don't know how to draw that, like, what the fuck's your problem? <laughs> Fair enough. It's fun, too, like, featuring some of these, like, Seth, you know, some some actual characters that we know uh, in real life or we know, you know, as comics fans. This is starting, I think, the Playboy stories. So once again, how do you do this? And I, I feel like he's creating this kind of different style again, reinventing these covers. <laughs> Those damn Harvey Awards are back. <laughs> this time he won a couple. Yeah, man, but he's still not happy. <laughs> that That's the end of the story once you win one. I think it was uh, Guy Ritchie on uh, the Nerdist podcast who said something like, you only need to hold the trophy to realize that it's hollow. Uh, yeah, I think about that all the time. It's so true. It's Yeah, I think of uh, validation as something that I hear a lot of artists or, you know, want that validation. And it's such a, I don't know, it's the wrong direction to put that energy. Because one, you have little to no control over it and then two that is a hollow trophy i i love that that i never feel satisfied man <laughs> like like i will i'm comfortable knowing that i'm going to die knowing that i will be unsatisfied and just always on that pursuit this is almost a literary cover yeah the little man and then you see 
literally the little man there. Um, the name of one of the collections of like his short stories. Really, really proud of collection. his rock star hair and really trying to hold on to it. <laughs> like he'll even do the Paul Pope gimmick where he'll have like photos of himself like in the back covers and, and like on the inside sometimes. Yeah, you're not going to get lucky and pull that out of the yeah. random issue. <laughs> yeah, he's he's really holding it on, and at least being honest. Are you saying rock star hair because he looks like John the Stutterer? Exactly. <laughs> the, uh, this is the first drawn quarterly issue. Not that they're, you know, don't seem to be doing anything different in terms of cover. You know, same logo, same even number treatment and everything. How about that for a ballsy? Mm -hmm. Yeah, like the, I, I do I just, sales just plummet. I, I feel like you look I, at this and it's just like, I, oh boy, I, Chester. I just keep thinking <laughs> Have about. Have you given up? About, uh, you know, what Jeff Smith said in, in one of our old podcast interviews about, like, everything inside the covers is your, is your art. But the cover, outward, it's, it, that's commerce. So the focus group at Yummy Fur Incorporated, when mm. they're putting their heads together, man, trying to figure out, like, how are we going to... How are we going to get this out to the public, man, and get, get people excited? You know, they sell a lot of crackers, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was trying to make some connection between the crackers and the yummy part. <laughs> Let's take it further. Read that. <laughs> say say you're, you're, uh, you're new to the, to the game. Uh, what is that comic? Yeah. Yemeni food? Yeah, that's, this, is, this is a tough one to call an M. Yeah. There, there's, uh, you know, just a certain amount of... R&D you have to do and, and be willing to write off. It's so fun looking at his covers, though, because I feel like they exemplify what I love about his work, which yeah. is like these bold different directions. You know, I mean, these comics contain auto bio stuff about Playboy and pornography. They contain uh, adaptations of the of the Gospels, the New Testament Gospels and the Bible. They have Ed the, ha the Happy Clown, you know, like the different stuff that's in this series. Maybe these are the perfect covers for it. Lemony Floor. <laughs> and this one is uh, yummy feds. It's a fun crop. I even like the uh, the diag the diagonals for your. I am loving the color. They're like so bold and just yeah. You don't see bold use of color really anywhere. I mean, I, I think that's a fluorescent ink or something. That that's not a hundred percent magenta. I don't the, think. The, or, or is that the, just the way it's reacting? I think that in, yeah, it may I think be the way that's it's the reacting. interaction between those two colors is making it like buzz in your eye. And I don't think it's being communicated uh, through the screen. But looking at this in person, your your eyeballs are vibrating looking yeah. at this. Yeah, that's neat. Whenever colors resonate like that next to each other, um, this is fun. They they talk about this drawing in this in one of these issues because this is from I Never Liked You. And uh, he draws with rapidographs, and he draws, like, these skeletons with these real fine little lines. And uh, the one girl in there steals his pen and, like, runs away. Probably the one that he was wrestling with on the cover a couple issues ago. There's a more straightforward, uh, easier-to-read logo. You wonder if Chris was like, Chester, man, people can't find your book. <laughs> but have it, having panels on the cover and non-grid panels... And also hints of that horror stuff, like the origins, the first several issues where the horror tone is really strong in the cover, kind of a callback to that. A painted cover, once again, pushing the envelope a little bit into different territory. And getting to the end here, 32, the last issue. Going biblical. But man, talk about like how different this is from, you know. Show cover one, yeah. yeah. What a journey. It's an evolving cartoonist, man. Even the lettering. Like, think how much the lettering evolves over the course of this. Like, some of the fun stuff on these covers is the call-outs and, the and, you know, new first issue, things like that. Uh, very uh, creative and seem to be restless cartoonists through yeah. this series. Like, constantly coming up with new directions and, and new things that he's trying. And, you know, that's the stuff I was into. Like, that's what spoke to me is, like, do a mini-comic about something else next time. Do a different genre, different style, different tools that you draw with. And I feel like his covers were a really good example of that for me. Pretty inspiring stuff, man, seeing seeing a body of work like this. Uh, we did Ed the Happy Clown in video form. We did uh, a couple issues of his earliest uh, auto bio from Yummy Fur. And this will not be the last uh, Chester Brown video that we do on Cartoonist Kayfabe. If you guys are good, I'm good. Mm -hmm. Kayfabers, like, follow, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hit the bell. We'll notify you when new vids are available. Jimmy, what's out there? Join me on Patreon.com slash JimRug, where you can download out-of-print zines and mini-comics. I have about a dozen of those available. They include drawings, 
pencils, scripts, uh, my whole process of how I make the comics that I make, like Street Angel and Octobriana, that's at patreon.com slash jimrug. Uh, check out the Total Recall show on YouTube, and uh, check out Jack Kirby, The Epic Life of the King of Comics, and Fantastic Four Grand Design. Red Room Comics in the Wild, every issue completely self-contained, four on the stands as of this recording. Uh, get them while they're hot. Uh, go to my link tree in the description below this video. You can have links to get to the uh, comics. You can have links to uh, get access to the Patreon. The free Comic Book Day comic is up there for free, or you could pay three bucks for the archive and read all the comics before they hit paper. What else, Jim? Subscribe to the Cartoonist Kayfabe e-newsletter at the links below this video. You can also find Cartoonist Kayfabe t-shirts and merchandise at the links below this video. Given those marching orders, Jimmy, we'll be on our way. Read more comics.